Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So no, I did not pull on this uh, Alter Dewey. I was actually able to borrow it from a middle child who's been YOLOing single pulls and was able to hit Red Scorpio. So in today's video, we're going to go over his 5-star moves and I'll do a little bit of gameplay and let you know what I think about him. But the most important question of all is, is he hot or not? Duh, look at his name. Yes, the Red Clad Flame Mancer is definitely a flamey unit, uh, very fiery, obviously sets fire zone, and when he VCs in, also restores party members HP by 30%, which is actually not bad at all. Very, very useful. He's also an alter unit, and so he has the ability to lock in zones with something called another zone. His special ability is, is he extends that by two turns. And note that end of turn, he can heal up to 40% or Barrier shielding up to 30% depending on number of moves of fire and crystal moves done that turn up to four moves. All right, so in terms of his uh, move set, he has a few choices here. Very defensive raging anger, uh, physical up, weapon damage up 25% for five turns. Note that when he's activated another zone, that doubles the effect. So it's 50% damage, 50% physical resistance, which is actually very, very useful. Grudge Spark is the one that helps enhance the entire fire team. Fire resistance down 50%. Fire type attacks are all party members up 50%. When in another zone, it will be one and a half times, which is 75% up, 75% down. Note that he is actually like Nokoko. Uh, he can switch his moves to whatever element it is of the four regular elements. So um, Brass Knuckles is crit damage up. However, I wouldn't recommend using this one. I mean, crit damage up 30% really isn't that useful. You can get 50, 60, um, that kind from other supportive units. And so since he has only three slots, don't worry about that one. And finally, this one is a uh, pretty standard stun move, can also inflict guaranteed pain. But again, you have other pain setters. Uh, I wouldn't recommend um, that move either. Either the defensive one or the fire resist up uh, down, uh, down while fire attacks up one would be the ones I use. All right, so Canon Denfir is the one that sets another zone. So note that it not only attacks four times XL Blunt, power and int up 35 for three turns. And then on top of that, um, this also of course changes element and it will awaken the zone to have another zone and it activates Lunatic for him. Now keep in mind that he can activate it this way, and he has an additional way to activate Lunatic, which is the standard Lunatic button. This one is Lunatic Crystal, so he will be able to... Um, he's very similar to A.S. Clark. He will have enhanced damage against weakness, enhanced damage in general. Um, yeah, don't forget that another zone also doubles the zones effect in terms of offense. So for weapon zones, it's 30 to 60. For elemental zones, 50 to 100. And finally, what I assume would be his DPS move, Crystal Blunt times 4XL, guaranteed crit setting for your entire team, changes element to one of the four standard elements if you're in elemental zone, and obviously increased damage in Lunatic. All right, so um, in terms of his Grass Dessa, pretty standard stuff. You can use whatever you want, but I usually use Pains with um, Bullseye enemy numbers and whatever choice you need for that particular battle, either weak point or uh, whatnot. Note that uh, Dewey Alter does enhance um, the weaknesses uh, damage for your entire team with, when he activates another zone. So um, that is really, really um, potent, and I'll show you that later on in the video. So let's take him out for a spin. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So he's actually quite... Uh, quite complex to use in a sense. However, um, normally I would just uh, have someone set zone. He would activate his another zone, boosting everyone by power and int, enhancing the weakness damage for your entire team, and also lock in the zone. Remember that another zone, once it's locked in, not only does it does double the damage uh, of the zone damage, it also keeps it so that zone can't be overwritten, although it can still be broken. Alright, so note that without his Lunatic, and in this case, um, he only activates Lunatic when in zone. So note that I cast his Cannon Defer, and it did not 
activate another zone because there's no zone uh, to activate it on. So um, not sh sure, um, you know, the use of that outside any sort of zone. Remember that it also does work in weapon type zones. However, you're losing the fact that he can change to one of the four elements like Nokoko. So in weapon type zones, he may still lock in and enhance the weapon type damage. However, you're losing a lot of um, versatility in terms of his moves changing to whatever uh, elemental zone in which case he can throw him in any of the four elemental zones and he can boost that team's offense by a lot especially if the enemy is weak to that element all right so you've seen his end of turn heal as well as his barrier in action depending on number of moves done that turn remember it's fire or crystal i believe so we've activated another zone i believe he's vc'd in you can see the arrow up on the fire zone icon and then you set up with the grudge spark so you increase the fire up and decrease the fire resistance of the enemy and finally you blast it with execution being that the crystal move now has converted to um, in this case fire zone and remember that since he's already a fire unit it's probably more natural to use it in fire zone it's just that don't forget you can actually use it in any of the four elements and i'm sure um, many of you will continue experimenting and probably use him even better than i do all right so again uh we're going to try taking on weaker self this is the one in purgatory not the dungeon mind you okay so this is just to practice and kind of get used to kind of what he does so again Note that when we were attacking the uh, regular horror, it wasn't weak to the attack, so the damage was, eh, I'll say, marginal. We're going to do the same thing and show you what damage we can get against an enemy who's weak to his attacks, in this case, again, in fire zone, uh, enhanced by another zone locked in. Alright, so again, I remind you that your another zone move does activate Crystal Lunatic for you, uh, for him, which is, uh, like I said, the Mind's Eye one. He also still has a Lunatic button, so I believe he can actually do it twice, which means he will essentially have him for six turns of Lunatic if needed. Although, don't forget that another zone only lasts for two plus two turns, which is four turns total, after which the zone itself is removed unless someone else brings in a new zone. So as much as another zone is great, keep in mind that it is limited in duration. Okay, so you want to see the effects of his um, enhanced weakness damage against someone. Watch all those damage. So we're using Aldo as our main DPS. We're going to um, just hit there, and you saw the damage there. You know, a few million. Not bad, already. And again, we did do some fire moves, and so we do get that end of turn heal and the small barrier. And finally, we did hit him for 6 million. Note that Serene is weak to fire. All right, now take a look at the numbers here. So the first round, I believe, before the HP stopper, all of this 4 million times 2. We're going to try to keep the uh, experiment the same. However, this time we're going to deactivate another zone. So watch the effects of activating another zone and adding that weakness multiplier power to all of them. Note that instead of 4, he did 12 times 2. And so, I mean, you can argue it's roughly 3 times. Keep in mind that, remember that you're doubling the effects of elemental zone damage. So instead of up 50%, you're up 100%. You're also adding power and int 35%, which is obviously increasing his physical damage. And on top of that, you're adding a weakness multiplier, which basically enhances the damage another 100%. So uh, not sure how the math exactly works out, but it looks to be you know, between two and three times. Very, very useful. Okay, in our next example, we're going to use alter dewey as a defensive unit remember that in another zone his moves uh, effects get doubled he has that shield uh, that's a physical shield 50 percent and also weapon attack up 50 percent which is actually quite offensive as well as defensive that raging anger so what we did is obviously just did a first turn af using fire zone grasta it doesn't really matter um how you want to do it because the thing is he if you really want a perfect setup you need three turns you've seen it against the enemies i've just demonstrated you really need to activate another zone no, you need to activate zone first then use his move to activate another zone then use his other move to either um do the uh fire up fire down or his shielding move and then and, and weapon type damage mind you and then finally you can spam him around so it's not that easy to set him up in that sense but i mean you know you can just play around with and see what kind of style of play works best for you. 
Okay, so again, remember that we used Aldo as well as our DPS this time. And yeah, with Alter Dewey using all of those benefits um, for your team, you're really enhancing um, all those damage a lot. Now, in our next couple of examples, and I'll show you as we go on, um, I don't know if I would consider Dewey Alter to be a uh, top line DPS. I mean, his spam move is decent, but I don't think the multiplier is nearly as high as some of the newer, like, super powerful, pure DPS units in the game. But what he lacks in a little bit of DPS, and mind you, he still does decent DPS, okay? He makes up for it with all that offensive support. So you got, remember, you got the another zone, which extra, extra damage. You got that weakness multiplier against weak enemies. You've got potential shielding weapon damage up, or you have straight up fire up, fire down. I mean... You know, not even bad. All right, not to mention, he is a multi-hit unit, and so you do get some combo meter out of it as well. Minor, but still, I'll mention it. Okay, so this is the dungeon um, home of Lost Atelier's um, Sylph. And so we really, uh, this is, remember, my son's account, and he hadn't beaten the 4.5 billion damage. Um, his roster is not nearly as mature, and so he didn't really um, have a chance to really take it down, but I wanted to take in his account with Alter Dewey and see if with this team we could break 4.5 billion and have him st one step closer to fighting that uh, Shadow Purgatory Beast, which, by the way, is an annoying fight nonetheless. Okay, so again, for those who don't know, um, you can go into Lost Atelier. I do have a video on that. You have to do 4.5 billion to each of the elemental um, spirits, and then you unlock an optional boss, which I also did film uh, on my channel. But back to my son's account. Let's see if we can get 4.5 billion damage. Watch the numbers of comparison between Ultra Dewey's damage, uh, True Manifestor Xion, as well as A.S. Sukiya. The numbers you see are much higher for the Xion's as well as Sukiya and not really as high for execution, but like I said, he's mostly more of an offensive support with some DPS capabilities. Watch the numbers we're getting with um, with uh, Shiondo. 200 times 3, uh, let's see here, 230 times 3. I mean, right there is already a billion just from Shion alone, which I will say that I know I mentioned this in his 5-star uh, review. Shion's definitely uh, one unit I'm probably going to reuse again for single target fights against enemies who are weak to fire. Okay, so shields got shattered. Um, we did 53, 56 billion. And my son's happy that I helped him earn a few extra points as well as uh, move on from that. All right, so let me know, know in the comments below what you think about Alter Dewey. Um, I know some of you have summoned and used it already. Um, not sure what you think of his kit as to either you've played it yourself or tried it with other combinations. My first impressions on using it, even on my son's account, man, he is definitely a uh, very versatile um, I think I would have to experiment with him more to see what kind of crazy stuff he can do. But that being said, I mean, He's a new unit and he's cool too. Like if you've done chapter uh, three of the uh, Mythos Future, you'll see what he does and, and, and kind of his backstory. Yeah, not gonna lie. I, I actually really looking forward to grinding out those opuses uh, for um, my own Dewey eventually. Now, I know of course some people do ask uh, how to get those opuses. Again, very common question and a very common answer. Only through red keys or sensationalist slash PCD finishes, okay? So um, run your red keys in very hard. Hope that uh, Opus drops instead of, say, a chant, I mean, a treatise or a codex. And if you're lucky enough, you'll get three of them and be able to side grade your unit to the um, altar style. And just to be cheeky, my son did put Dewey as a grass to holder. All right. So in our next example, we're going to show how his another zone locks in the zone such that the Wind Artificial Spirit cannot override it. Remember that if you fought this one before, at the HP Stopper at 50%, it can rewrite the zone and kind of reestablish its own Wind Zone. So, Alter Dewey VCs in, heals the team a little bit, which is, like I said, not bad, especially against enemies who attack quite powerfully on turn 1. If you don't have Fire Zone Grasta and you're relatively, um, you know, and you need uh, someone like a zone setter. He's definitely a better zone setter than, for example, 
normal style Hardy or even AS Gyru. He just has a lot more power to it. Okay, so notice that we are actually using a very similar team or the same team as what we did in the Holmes Lost Atelier. Xion's going to just shred everything, and like I said, we're just pouring everything into him, and we're giving all those buffs and debuffs from um, Ultra Dewey, not to mention locking in the zone. Oh, you want to start Wind King? Oh, too bad for you! Nothing happened! Loser! And that is exactly some of the powers that you can use uh, with Ultra Dewey, and as well as all the other Ultra characters as well. Don't forget that Ultra Iska locks in um, her Slash Zone if she wants to as well. And you can actually use it to lock in other zones, remember? But in this case, we're just demonstrating um, Elemental Zone. Alright. And we're just going to finish it off. Obviously, with the MP Consumption Grasta, it ends the fight, uh, ends his MP very, very quickly for Ultra Dewey. So, uh, you know, you obviously can modify it to whatever you want instead. Okay, so... Uh, just showing you the grass to Loda as usual. Again, just a reminder, this is my son's account. Look that he is actually very, very poor in Chrono Stones. He likes to YOLO singles, and so I don't, um, you know, I don't blame him for trying, but man, having only 30 stones is kind of rough. Okay. And again, I realize my son's grass is not nearly optimized. I mean, hey, it's his account. Um, he is 14 now, so I mean, he's a teenager, but he's not really, you know, super serious. Uh, about playing the game. In conclusion, Ultra Dewey is an excellent add to your team. Um, if you don't have a normal style version of him, he is definitely useful and uh, would be a great add in terms of summoning for it in the recent banners. And if not, good luck in getting all those opuses. Hopefully you'll be able to side grade him like I will eventually in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.